Hello and welcome back to the massive YouTube iceberg. I got a new mic. That's all the intro I have, let's get back into the list. Jack Stauber is a musician you might have heard of before, as he's gotten quite popular over the past couple years. You know that song, Buttercup? Yeah, that was him. However, his history with YouTube runs way far back. He joined YouTube in 2010 and uploaded his first video in 2013, titled Juice Psychedelia Test, which is just kind of footage of him walking around with weird effects and a cool song playing. Then he uploaded the video titled Lice, which was an absurdist animation that would prove to be the genre of most of his later content. His videos are mostly music videos, as nowadays he does produce albums and EPs just like any other musician. It's kind of crazy that one person can create both music and animation that are this high quality by themselves, especially since he's been doing it since he was just 16. Timothy Birmingham is a vlogger who's been on YouTube since 2011. He's an older guy, about 60 years old, so he doesn't quite get the whole technology thing. Like, there are several videos by him where he just spends the whole video responding to a single mean comment. However, Tim is a very likable guy if you peruse his channel long enough. He lives with his 32-year-old son and has a pretty simple life. He uploads nearly every single day, and the topics can range from him eating and reviewing food, interacting with his audience, unboxing fan mail, you know, all hallmarks of your average vlogging channel. But there's one video by Timothy called She's Still Sleeping, which I would say is the most disturbing video on the iceberg so far. It starts out as any other Timothy vlog. He does a standard intro, then he begins to talk to the camera about how it's already past noon and his wife Penny is still asleep. Something that's very, very out of character for her. He shakes it off, saying that it's a bit strange, and then moves on, continuing to talk to the camera about other stuff going on with him. However, as it would turn out, Penny wasn't sleeping. She had passed away overnight due to unknown circumstances. Timothy would go on to make several tribute videos over the next couple of years dedicated to his memory of Penny. After realizing she had passed, he did not delete She's Still Sleeping, which was met with a bit of backlash from commenters, although he stated that he wanted something, anything at all to remember her by. Extremist pipelines is a very, very broad topic, although I believe it refers to YouTube's tendency to continually recommend more extreme political views as you progress down the political rabbit hole. A young, impressionable 15-year-old could watch a PewDiePie video, which leads to a Ben Shapiro owns Feminazi video, which leads to Alex Jones Infowars theories about the government controlling the weather, and sooner or later you might as well believe in QAnon shit and start frequenting Stormfront or 4chan's poll. Okay, maybe, as we'll soon talk about, that Alex Jones part isn't so relevant anymore, but you get what I'm trying to say. Going down this pipeline is all too easy for impressionable teenagers, which has led YouTube to receive a fuck ton of criticism, as YouTube is often what radicalized several mass murders over the years. They seem to have cracked down on these quite a bit, as I mentioned in the last video. They've made it significantly harder to find conspiracy theory videos. That being said, influencers like Andrew Tate that spread incredibly misogynistic ideals have massive platforms on YouTube without even having an account. There's not really any clear solution to this, and it's kind of a plague on our society, honestly. Although, in the time between writing this script and recording, Andrew Tate got arrested, so get shitted on, bozo. Trey Eric Sessler, better known as Lenscap Productions or Mr. Anime, was a YouTube who was one of the pioneers of the YouTube anime review community, going back as far as 2006. His videos inspired several big names today, such as Giguk and Glass Reflection. His impact on the site is absolutely nothing to be scoffed at, although I don't think you'll be seeing many Mr. Anime videos in your recommended feed. As his videos progressed onward into the coming years, his content would get a bit strange. He developed an obsession with firearms, doing extensive research on serial killers, and according to some rumors, killing and torturing animals around his neighborhood. In February of 2012, Trey uploaded a video titled Mr. Anime as Planning Something, where he has a vague explanation that he's soon planning on rewarding himself, so he'll be taking a couple weeks off of YouTube. A couple weeks later, he uploaded a video stating that he found a job in a field that he found fascinating. Soon after that video was uploaded, he would go on a killing spree murdering his entire family in cold blood, including his parents, little brother, and remaining pets. He then proceeded down his street to his high school, where he planned on killing at least 70 students in an effort to become the biggest mass murderer in history, inspired by the Columbine High School Massacre. His reason for killing his family is apparently so that they wouldn't have to deal with the trauma of having their son slash brother being a mass murderer. However, he never carried through with the mass shooting at his high school, instead opting to wait at his house until police came. 
The situation is incredibly jarring as this isn't some obscure YouTuber, he was actually a very influential figure in the mid to late 2000s on YouTube. Several other content creators would go on to make videos about the situation, and he remains one of the most infamous YouTubers turned murderers. Robert Heltman is another one of those creepy ARG channels. All the videos consist of grayscale images with ominous audio playing in the background. What the images actually are of appear to be a dead body wrapped in plastic bags that the uploader names Daisy. There are two scenes in every video that transition into each other with these ominous messages. Combining each message from every video results in this poem, which tells the story of a lady who went to church and encountered a dead body on the ground festering with worms and stuff like that. Then the parson tells her that's how she'll be when she dies. Looking at the other videos, we can see that this body moves around sometimes, moving objects, and in the final video, leaving the house altogether. So most likely the body is perhaps possessed by some spirit or something of the sort. The name of the channel, Robert Heltman, doesn't actually refer to the person uploading the videos, but rather an Australian actor of the same name, who's most well known for his role in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang as the Child Catcher. Huh. Obviously, I don't think this channel is really real. It's just another art piece like several other entries in this tier. God fucking damn it, I do have to talk about this at some point. If you're an avid Iceberg Explained watcher, which I'm assuming you are because you're currently about five hours into one of them, then you may be accustomed with this phrase. As someone who has been looking at iceberg charts years before they ever got popular with YouTube, this phrase appears in basically every single one of them. I mean, you've got it showing up in the conspiracy theory iceberg, the lost media iceberg, found footage iceberg, and now the YouTube iceberg. Oh shit, that's me! Medieval found footage is on the level of every copy of Blank as personalized shit that the Mario 64 iceberg popularized, although with this one, it seems less like people are aware that it's just an inside joke from when these iceberg charts were still just shit posts by 4chan users. Potted Plant even seems to recognize this as he included I'm sorry after the phrase in the original image. I guess, in fairness, I should explain what it is. Medieval found footage basically just refers to the idea that there is found footage of medieval times that's produced via some form of time travel. A video was uploaded in 2020 to YouTube by Basti666 in response to the meme, which basically just features some grainy black and white footage. It's obviously fake, all of these are just taken from various black and white films, but it still manages to get some YouTube commenters. To be honest, it's a pretty interesting concept, but until time travel is actually invented, it will stay just that, a concept. Flying Girl in Russian Wood is a video posted by Zhevganish2000 in 2009 that appears to run at 6 FPS. Apparently, according to the description, the uploader was going through a walk through the woods with his dog, when the dog runs off, and leads him to this strange sight of a little girl suspended in the air, while a person, presumably the girl's mother or father, tries to get her down before she finally lands at the end of the video. What's interesting is that this one isn't promoting anything, doesn't have ominous music playing, nor does it have some ham-fisted moral lesson at the beginning or end. It's just a girl floating, uploaded on a channel that has exactly one video. I mean, I mean, it's still fake, the general consensus being that the girl was hoisted up by some kind of invisible rope, or rope that was digitally edited out post-production. I'll link a pretty good video by Captain Disillusion that debunks this video, which, by the way, this guy's a really good channel. Burden is a strange YouTube channel that started in 2009, although it didn't begin uploading until 2015. The description states that these videos are for those who are no longer human and those who can't relate. Videos range from unruly despair to unrecognized rage, deprived visions. The videos themselves have tons of strange imagery that's not really explainable, and the descriptions have philosophical commentary on life, like how acquiring material possessions won't leave you fulfilled in life, or how dreams are imperfections of sleeping, just like how consciousness is an imperfection of being awake, or how you should forget, 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 forget. Ultimately, Burden is a nihilistic art piece that discusses various issues with the human condition, and uses some creepy imagery to get those points across. I couldn't find anything on the identity of whoever runs the channel, and frankly I don't really want to, however they still seem to interact with their audience pretty frequently, even having a Discord server. Huh. 
Everything is Terrible is an artist collective based in Los Angeles, California, founded in 2007 by a group of college students that met in the University of Ohio in the early 2000s. The collective is dedicated to going through VHS stores, garage sales, thrift stores, and bargain bins and finding outrageous or strange clips you can only find by doing this kind of thing. Then they edit the films down and post them to the internet on their own website in a Tim and Eric-esque comedy style. Popular videos by Everything is Terrible include So Your Cat Wants a Massage, a whisker watch alert is in effect here. Remember, a major whisker watch alert is in effect here. What are we doing here? And of course, the ever popular Dwayne, which, yes, this is where that meme was sort of kickstarted. They're also well known for having over 15,000 copies of Jerry Maguire on VHS, with their final goal to build a giant pyramid in the southwest United States desert, made entirely out of Jerry Maguire's. They're also responsible for eight feature-length films, all composed of VHS clips. And last but not least, Everything is Terrible, according to an interview by Vice, at one point got the keys to the largest ever collection of home movie VHS tapes from a source they legally were not allowed to disclose anything about, besides the fact that they were the longest running primetime television program in history. Combining those two attributes together narrows it down so far to the point where, yeah, you get the picture. Rejected from this television program were thousands upon thousands of strange home videos that they were legally allowed to sift through and do whatever they wanted with. Enter Memory Hole, a YouTube channel created by Everything is Terrible that reuses these unused home videos and adds in editing that just makes everything feel oddly psychedelic, I guess? These videos were rejected from being on AFVI, I mean the television program that they got them from, for a whole host of reasons, ranging from just kind of being boring and not really that funny, to genuinely being horrifying, helped in no small part by the editing and forced by the Everything is Terrible team. These videos include Shaving Cream Torture, Clown Town, and Death is Coming. After I heard the backstory behind these videos, I had a hard time believing they were even real, but they are. I'll leave this entry off with my favorite memory hole video, which is Happy Birthday Lil Friend, where a family sings the happy birthday song for their pet raccoon named Annabelle. Happy birthday to you. Conclus is an atmospheric indie horror game released by Studio Snowspot in 2018. Having a PlayStation 1 aesthetic and inspired by several other horror games like Silent Hill, it's quite visually interesting on its own. However, that's not the reason this game is popular, nor is its 2018 release the true origin of it. Conclus, in actuality, started as an ARG on YouTube of an allegedly rare PS1 game, kind of like Petscop or Ben Drowned. The series was produced by John Martin and featured 18 videos before the series' eventual... conclusion in 2018, with the game releasing as an indie game on Steam later that year, which... I think it's pretty interesting, since it's not often that these video game-related ARGs will form into actual releasable products. Nowadays, John Martin is working on the sequel to Conclus, Conclus 2, The Drifting Prefecture. Satan's Sphinx refers to a video that allegedly finds its origins on the deep web, being banned by the United States government due to its tendencies to make people go insane and kill themselves or each other or something. It apparently contained audio that consisted of extremely loud sounds, screaming and whispering noises, and various flashing images of disturbing content, such as gore. This video may bring flashbacks back to entries such as The Grifter, Mariana Mortiger Glesgorv, or even Suicide Mouse and Suicide Squid were basically the same shit as Satan Sphinx. I think it was either a conspiracy theory made up by someone who was afraid of MK Ultra shit, or just made up by someone trying to be edgy on the internet, which is how a lot of these started anyways. Either way, it's still fun to see people be genuinely convinced by these shitty Windows Movie Maker recreations that are somehow even less scary than the likes of Carl Mayer. The year was 1986 in Japan, and American tissue brand Kleenex issued a strange commercial advertising their product. It featured a lady singing to some kind of weird ogre baby, and it just has a very ominous feel thanks to the lack of instruments and the fact that the commercial is just generally kind of unexplainable. This of course led to several rumors about the advertisement saying that it was cursed, and everyone involved with the production of the commercial had died. 
or that watching it would cause you to have bad luck or something like that. The biggest rumor of all was that if you watched it past midnight, the audio and video would become distorted and demonic. So is this real? No! Eratos refers to an urban legend that was pretty much everywhere around the internet around 2015 to 2016. It was originally started by this 4chan post created by an anonymous user of the X-Board. They speak of how their friend, an unnamed homeless woman working at a programming department, came across a mysterious tape gun that said the words Eratos across it. The man she was working with immediately told her to get rid of it and not mention it to any supervisors or co-workers, stating that the company has code to immediately sever ties with any employee that decides to search up Eratos and their system. The rumor spread further across the board with several other posts corroborating similar details about how Eratos is some kind of sketchy program that a lot of big web companies, such as YouTube, use to remove copyright infringement on their sites. The Eratos story then takes us to many places on the internet, such as Kronos for Life Jurassic Park, an obscure Jurassic Park fan channel run by a man and his deceased grandmother that has allegedly been targeted by the aggressive program known as Eratos with frequent copyright takedowns. Mysteriously, one of the videos includes an address and the YouTube automatic captions feature, which can't actually be edited by the user. The address isn't valid, as the zip code doesn't match up with the town given. However, it does match up with the Bandcamp account for KFC Murder Chicks, which has since been taken down. The band allegedly comprised a couple of homeless women, one of which had worked in a warehouse. KFC Murder Chicks was linked to a YouTube upload of the album by a channel with the name Todd Ellsworth, with a description of reading Eratos or Rusts. Todd Ellsworth, of course, being an anagram for The Lost World, which is the name of Jurassic Park 2. Todd's Twitter account often posted weird things, including this image of a police sketch of a rape suspect from Maui. There was also, of course, Exer Herb, a YouTube channel that was covering the whole mystery pretty well until it was taken down for copyright infringement. Eratost was a pretty elaborate ARG that had a lot of interesting things going on. It may or may not have kind of fallen apart when the whole premise was that it's this term you're not allowed to search for, since that's something that's easily disprovable by, you know, searching for it. Still though, I think it's definitely one of the more interesting ARGs thus far. The ARG is over at this point, but KFC Murder Chicks still produces music, so check them out if you're into music that sounds like this. Lizard Squad was a hacking group quite infamous on the internet in the mid-2010s. They are most infamous for their hacks on several gaming services such as Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, the servers of games like Destiny and League of Legends, and they also hacked the Machino website to just be ASCII art of their logo, all of which were conducted in 2014. Also, in the tail end of 2014, they managed to even hack North Korea's weird internet thing that only has a couple websites. In January of 2015, they hacked Malaysia Airlines websites, redirecting users to an image of a baller as fuck lizard, with the message 404 plane not found, obviously referencing the missing flight of the previous year. They also issued a bomb threat to American Airlines flight that was occupied by John Smedley, the president of Sony Online Entertainment. On January 26, 2015, social media services such as Facebook, Instagram, and Tinder suffered outages. Lizard Squad quickly raced to the scene, claiming it was them that caused them to go down, but Facebook later released a statement that the outages were due to their own services and not a third-party attack. So Lizard Squad just fucking lied. Later that week, Taylor Swift's Instagram account was hacked by them, and they stated that they'll sell Taylor's nude photos in exchange for Bitcoin. This, of course, was also a lie, as Taylor Swift did not have any nude photos on her Instagram. Many Lizard Squad members, such as Vinny Omari, Julius Kivimaki, Bradley Jan Willem Van Roy, and Zachary Bukta have been discovered by the government and consequently arrested for, well, computer hacking. Although, some of them have been bailed out of jail. All in all, Lizard Squad has always gone down, at least in my eyes, as Anonymous's annoying little brother. Yuri Mir is, or was, one of the most popular Terraria content creators on the platform, with over 400,000 subscribers and active from 2011 to 2017. He was a very beloved member of the Terraria community, often interacting with his fellow fans of the game, and even working with Realogic, the developers of the game, to produce trailers for new updates. Yuri Mir's actual identity is a complete mystery, since he's never shown his face, never revealed his name, and doesn't even narrate his videos, usually he uses text captions instead. Despite being so universally loved within the game's community, 
Ymir was quite a mysterious guy. The mystery was heightened even more when in 2015, he disappeared off the face of the earth. His YouTube channel stopped uploading, his Twitter went dark, and not even his friends in the community had heard anything from him. Ymir stayed invisible for about the next two years before eventually returning in 2017, posting a long pinned comment for how for years, all he had done in life was grind out his work and his YouTube channel. This made it so he couldn't care about the things in life that really matter, being his relationship with his friends, family, and a significant other. So over the past two years, he had decided to reprioritize his life and focus on the things that are more important to him. That being said, he decided to come back to his channel as he still felt empty from not using his creative side. After that video, he uploaded six more videos before disappearing once more, and to this day, Yurimir has not shown up on the internet ever since. I've heard rumors that Yurimir said his final goodbyes on his YouTube channel discussion page, which is a feature that no longer exists. Thanks, YouTube. The leading theory of what happened is that he had health complications and decided to start spending more time with his family. Is Yurimir dead? Probably not, I think he just finds things more important in life than his YouTube career and internet friends. Maybe one day he'll come back in a cyber shell-esque blaze of glory, but until then, Yuri Mir will live on in the minds of many Terraria fans. Meat Formerly known as Meat Sleep, is a horror YouTube channel that started back in 2014, ran by a group of approximately 11 people. The videos uploaded to the channel are often very hard to follow and have disturbing imagery and audio. The series spanned over several channels, including the original Meat Sleep channel on YouTube, Sonkin, a secondary channel created a couple days before Meat Sleep, and Tenol Biking, a user on the Russian social media site VK. The series comprised over 90 videos, and fans spread theories about what it all means. Themes in their videos contained things like stalking, kidnapping, sexual fetishism, and even cannibalism. There were theories that the person who runs the channel is a real-life serial killer, or that it was an ARG. However, they revealed when the series ended that Meat Sleep didn't actually have a central plot, and was rather building up the videos based on the theories that people had about it in the comments section. The commenters were actually the real, true directors of the series, rather than the people behind the channel. When I first got to Meat Sleep on this part of the iceberg, I kinda rolled my eyes at it because at face value it's pretty similar to a lot of stuff on tier 4, but ultimately, it's a pretty creative series and is one of the most interesting ways to do an ARG I've ever seen. However, as Meat Sleep gained popularity, things got a bit ugly, due to the nature of it being a series spanning multiple channels that aren't immediately obviously linked to each other at first. Things got a bit ugly when fans went out of their way to try and search for more channels that link to Meat Sleep. They began harassing several individuals, including an innocent, unrelated woman who was hosting a GoFundMe for a six-week-old Chihuahua's medical attention. She took down the video and her entire YouTube channel due to how much harassment she was receiving from Meat Sleep fans. This eventually culminated in the start of 2016 when Meat Sleep uploaded a final video titled no more, where they chastised the viewers for being disrespectful towards random people. With this video, they dispelled all mystery of the channel before ending it. Later, at some point, all the videos on the Meat Sleep channel were taken down, including the videos by several other YouTubers about Meat Sleep, such as Nightmind's video. Meat Sleep stands as one of the most interesting ARG experiments in the history of YouTube, but in the end, what caused its downfall was its unruly fanbase who believed the whole evil serial killer thing a bit too much. Meat Sleep went dark for the next five years before coming back to their Twitter account in 2021, only to inform viewers that the main person behind the channel had passed away that year. Found on the Tape is a YouTube channel that posted three videos in 2011 and stopped uploading past that point. The videos all have similar audiovisual aesthetics, with creepy imagery, a low buzzing noise, and of course, these strange codes thrown about the videos. Yeah, there's another ARG. The codes in these videos led to a download link for a custom Half-Life 2 map. The map is a filthy room covered in stains, and trying to leave the room will result in a jump scare of a face found in the videos. There were two other maps who were sent by email to a select few people who had emailed Found on the Tape previously. These maps had players crawling through vents, until having them fall to their deaths at the end. Finally, the last map has you run from this monster in a vent, and that's pretty much where the ARG ends. Not crazy elaborate, probably by sheer virtue of being kinda old, but still an interesting way to go about it. Including Half-Life 2 map is pretty unique.
Pollution Entertainment was a YouTube channel run by Chilean teenager Matias Ignacio Vera Oyarzo. He started this channel in 2014 when he was only 10 years old and initially did Let's Plays of the kind of games you'd expect from 2014 YouTube. You know, Five Nights at Freddy's, Slender, SCP Containment Breach. Although it wouldn't be until 2018 when he would gain large amounts of notoriety. He made several racist and xenophobic comments toward his fellow content creators. He was also an avid sexual harasser, at one point masturbating on a live stream while moaning the name of one of his fellow classmates who definitely did not consent to him doing this. By the way, this was when he was only 13 or 14. He was also alleged to have sexually harassed several colleagues, including touching them in intimate areas. However, even all of these pale in comparison to what Pollution Entertainment is most infamous for, which is the death of his pet kitten, Jason. On December 15th, 2018, he uploaded a video stating that his cat had passed away due to accidental causes and that he had adopted two new kittens. However, four days later on December 19th, this was found out to not be the truth. Apparently, he got into an argument with one of his friends on WhatsApp, and as a result, sent a video of him abusing the hell out of his cat throwing him, stepping on him, kicking him, and repeatedly hitting him with a wooden spoon, and then the cat later died from the injuries. Another video surfaced of Matthias abusing one of his new cats by throwing it into a dirty toilet bowl. So obviously after these videos came to light, surely Matthias was heavily punished. Like, at least a channel termination, right? No. YouTube allowed this channel to stay up for years, and it's not like this flew under their radar or anything. This was a huge deal in the Spanish-speaking side of YouTube. This channel, Dallas Review, with 10 million subscribers made a video on pollution. Jordy Wilde also made a video on him, who had 3.5 million. Hell, it even made it onto national mainstream news in his home country. However, YouTube, in their infinite wisdom, decided not to delete pollution's channel. Fast forward two years later. Pollution's video gained popularity, and he developed a cult-like fanbase of people who thought the animal abuse was really cool. Several channels arose on the Spanish side of YouTube abusing animals in Pollution's name, and the issue only got worse and worse, with YouTube doing nothing about it. It took Critical to finally upload two videos calling YouTube staff to action. They waited an entire month after he posted, and again, two whole years after the abuse happened, before finally taking down Pollution for good. Ash Vlogs was another ARG started by Raka Raka, that guy I was talking about in Tier 3. It was a murder mystery that was originally presented as being real, ran by a game master who audience only knew as a Reddit user by the name of I Know Where She Is. It originally started as a simple YouTube channel where a girl creates vlogs for her small audience and then follows her getting kidnapped and possibly murdered. The ARG is ridiculously intricate and transcends several social medias such as YouTube, Reddit, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and even Discord. It also evolved into Raka Raka getting stalked. I mean, they weren't actually stalked as part of the ARG. This is most likely one of the most intricate ARGs YouTube has to offer. We don't actually have enough time to explain this one fully, so just go watch an Expo's video if you want more info. He does a better job than I ever could. As always, link in the description. Hi Walter, I got a new GF today, it refers to a video uploaded by a channel called Hi Walter in 2009, the only video on the channel. In it, a creepy looking guy named Patrick excitedly talked into a camera about how he met a beautiful girl at the mall, addressed to a person named Walter. They went shopping, bought some clothes and jewelry, then he took her back to his place. He then states that she hates cameras, but he's gonna show Walter anyways. He then opens a door and the woman is on the ground, tied up, screaming and crying. He then enters the room, smiles, and the video ends. I probably shouldn't need to explain that this video is a work of fiction. The way Patrick acts in the video is so exaggerated, and as I've discussed with a couple other cases like this, a kidnapper or rapist probably wouldn't upload a video like this to YouTube publicly. This video would remain quite unknown for the next seven years, gaining only around 7,000 views in that time. However, the video gained massive amounts of attention in 2016, which I believe started from it being featured on a now unlisted Blame It On Jorge video titled Creepy Videos on the Internet Number 7. People began to be convinced that High Walter was a real serial kidnapper and began an investigation into missing person reports from 2009. People then discovered the case of Kayla Berg, a 15 year old from Wisconsin who disappeared only two months before High Walter was uploaded. The woman in the video even kinda looked like Kayla, all 13 pixels of her, which led people to be convinced that Patrick was the man who had kidnapped her. 
a witch hunt was started against the man in the video, and soon enough, the FBI became involved in researching this edgy horror skit from seven years ago. Innocent people that had nothing to do with either the kidnapping or the production of the video were harassed, and of course, the video was later found out to be fake. The video was produced by two people who were simply doing a skit. Kayla's mother was heartbroken to find that a potential lead after seven years was simply just some person on YouTube trying to be edgy. And hell, the original intent of the video actually had nothing to do with Kayla whatsoever. It was just a very unfortunate coincidence that was conflated beyond belief by ignorant internet users. This is why you never, ever let the internet be criminal investigators. At the very least, the debacle sparked a lot more attention to the Kayla Berg case, but to this day, she has never been found. Dad Feels, or Just Dad, is a YouTube series created by Nathan Barnett in 2019. It's considered an ARG by many, including the very iceberg chart I'm covering, but Barnett has officially stated that he disowns the term. On a surface level, Dad is a YouTube user who claims to be the best YouTuber in the universes. It seems pretty simple on paper, however, through digging deeper, it gets a bit more interesting. In one of Barnett's videos on his personal channel, he explains that Dad is a character he made for a few years prior. But now, a mysterious person is impersonating that character with the use of deepfake technology. Dad would then show up multiple times on his channel, inserting himself into otherwise innocuous videos. Dad would begin to show up everywhere in a very long and elaborate ARG. Yes, it is an ARG, even though Nathan claims it isn't. Just like Ash Vlogs, I don't really have time to summarize it here, but luckily there's an hour-long Nexpo video that is there for anyone who wants to learn more. Also like Ash Vlogs. Listen, he's a good channel, okay? <laughs> Geometry Center was a mathematics research center at the University of Minnesota that developed the GeomView, a program that allowed users to run simulations of various geometric situations. With this program, they produced several short films testing out various geometric theories in an easy-to-digest manner. These included 1991's Not Not, uh, about the mathematics of knot theory, 1997's The Shape of Space, that explored various three-dimensional spaces, and most notably, 1994's Outside In, which illustrated exactly how one would go about about turning a sphere inside out without puncturing or tearing it. This video was re-uploaded in its entirety to YouTube in 2011 by a user named SS Jelm, and since then it's gained nearly 7 million views. It gained this popularity through yet another case of YouTube's algorithm recommending some random video to every YouTube user ever in a similar fashion to All Tomorrow's or Plastic Love. Or that one fucking Majora's Mask video, that goddamn thumbnail, it isn't even on the iceberg, I just want to rant about it anyways. Outside In actually predates all of those examples I just mentioned, however, and it's often been called the center of YouTube for that reason, since no matter where you go, everything links back to this video. Creepy? I don't know, if you're a pussy, maybe. Plasma Master Don was an elderly YouTube user in his mid-70s that did vocal covers of popular songs, covering songs from all different eras from Elton John to Frank Ocean. It quickly gained a lot of popularity, as people thought it was pretty nice to see an older guy putting himself out there with something he seemed passionate about. He was constantly interacting with his audience, and many said that his videos harkened back to the glory days of YouTube where people would just sit in front of a camera and, well, broadcast themselves. It hit especially hard since this channel rose to popularity in 2020, and if you were around on you know, planet Earth that year, you'll know that people's general outlook on life was pretty fucking depressing around that time. Plasma Master Dawn emerged at a time where people needed some uplifting content. As we've gone over, situations like this have actually happened a couple times, like Bernard Albertson and Tony Ray Winchester, and those are both pretty wholesome displays from the internet at large, Keemstar's bullshit notwithstanding, although the story of Plasma Master Dawn turned out a bit differently than those two examples. After looking into Don's personal life, users discovered something no one wanted to happen. Donzel Edward Owens was a registered sex offender. And this isn't some far-off thing that happened like 40 years ago that he had since repented for or whatever. He had sexually assaulted an underage boy as recently as 2019, only a year before the mysterious YouTube algorithm picked him up. He stayed on YouTube for a bit after this came to light, and his behavior was very strange, like one comment where he calls what appears to be a young boy his Christmas present, or when he gave a heart to a comment saying, I wouldn't mind if he was my grandpa, I wouldn't mind the odd touching. 
A look into his internet footprint revealed things got even more disturbing, like how he's been on YouTube since 2006 and often made friends with men significantly younger than him. What really did Plaza Master Don in was a video uploaded by Nick Crowley on December 11th, 2020, called YouTube's Hidden Predator, where he essentially corroborated everything that was known about his past at the time. Don stopped uploading videos after Crowley posted this, and then, 10 days later, he passed away following a lengthy illness. Olivier de Sagazan is a French performance artist and sculptor. He is well known for his performance Transfiguration, where he applies paint, makeup, and many, many other things to his face in order to make himself seem like several different kinds of strange, horrific monsters. He's been doing the performance since 1998, doing it nearly 300 different times. However, where it really gained in popularity is in 2008 when he uploaded it to YouTube. Like many things on this list, there's not really any creepy backstory to this, it's just performance art. Everyone knows that pornography isn't allowed on YouTube. That goes without saying, right? However, did you know that you can actually find NSFW content very easily through a loophole in YouTube's very own community guidelines? You see, YouTube doesn't allow sexually explicit content for the purpose of sexual gratification. However, if it's exclusively for artistic, or in this case, educational value, YouTube is a-okay with that kind of content staying on the platform. I'm obviously not going to show any content because while this video should qualify as educational, YouTube is notoriously bad at staying consistent with their own rules on pretty much everything. However, if you look up something like Naked Yoga on YouTube, you will straight up find bare naked ladies, and I'm not talking about that one. Now, I'm not saying that the naked body is inherently sexual, but it's still pretty crazy that it's just out there in the open like that. Hell, you can even find literal videos of people having sex by looking up sex tutorial. It's pretty crazy. My Dad's Tapes is another ARG on YouTube that started around 2011. The first video starts as an introduction to the basic premise. A man's father, who has been estranged from the family for unexplained reasons, passes away on New Year's Eve 2010. He left behind a couple cars, a trailer, a bag of clothes, and interestingly, a box of VHS tapes. The VHSs are found in seemingly innocuous cases, like the first one being in a box for the 1979 film Scavenger Hunt. The actual tapes themselves include footage of what seems to be a man in a strange mask following women around and killing them. As he began to investigate the murders, a mysterious YouTube account by the name of Do Not Continue begins commenting on his videos telling him to, well, stop continuing. This is yet another really intricate ARG that I can't really do justice by myself. Going forward, if you want more info on an ARG I talk about in this video, just look up an explained video. They're usually really well made. I swear this isn't me being lazy. Okay, it kinda is, but... Exploshi is a Scottish YouTuber who joined in 2020, and since then she's been producing these animated videos parodying several well-known cartoons and video games, such as Amazing World of Gumball, Adventure Time, and Friday Nights at Freddy's. What sets her videos apart from other content creators who do pretty much the same stuff is the unique style in which she makes her videos. They all share a general aesthetic of, in her words, crusty outdated media, complete with a VHS filter, compressed audio, and an opening logo that would not be out of place in the 1980s or 90s. Her style also seems to be heavily inspired by animators such as Pilot Red Sun, with tons of stylistic animation errors and characters doing, um, that thing. I'm gonna be honest, I did not know that Exploshi was a popular YouTube animator, I kinda just saw her as that one person on Twitter. Saudi Arabia Police Encounter a Real Witch is a video surfaced around 2016 that features an alleged witch hobbling through the Saudi Arabian desert filmed by a pair of policemen. She's dressed in an oddly clean white cloak and is carrying around a long wooden staff. She then starts walking towards them and laughing while they start screaming out in fear and backing the car up, and that's pretty much the whole video. Was it real? Doubt it. The video was most likely one of three things. A hoax, spread online in order to get a rise out of people on the internet, an art project, which is what pretty much all of these feel like, or, of course, it could be genuine, and that's maybe not a witch per se, but a mentally ill homeless woman on the side of the street, which, let's face it, it's pretty likely. Either way, the guy filming is severely overacting, screaming for his life over a woman standing there while he's in the comfort of his car. No! I'm not even really sure if he's supposed to be a police officer, so I can't find the original upload of the video, but if he is, that's not how police officers act.
Teddy has an operation as a video uploaded by Zef Frank in 2013. He was a pretty established YouTuber even beyond this video, especially for his videos he now uploads on wildlife from around the world. Anyways, the video features a doctor who was also the narrator cutting into a teddy bear and explaining what all his organs do. The organs, of course, being shit like candy, sprinkles, flesh, a massive beating heart, you know, childlike shit that you expect from a teddy bear. People often call this video really creepy and like nightmare fuel, but honestly, I think it's just kind of funny more than anything. Grave Robbing for Morons is an obscure VHS tape released in the late 1980s to early 1990s, where a young man with a speech impediment teaches you the most efficient way to rob graves and prepare the stolen human remains for sale on the black market. He's even holding what seems to be a real human skull throughout the video. Problem is, nobody can seem to identify any producer of the video. In the era this video was presumably released in, homemade VHS tapes were spread around like wildfire, and unless the creators of the video specifically identified themselves in the video, you kinda couldn't figure out who made it, since they're often redistributed, copied, traded, and torrented more times than you can easily keep track of. So, is this video really an earnest tutorial on how to rob graves? Well, this is the part of the entry where I would say, of course not, and then give you a whole list of things wrong with it, and then condescendingly make fun of you for believing it. However, I can't really do that here. The skull used in the video is shockingly realistic, and you won't really find that kind of realism from any kind of fake skull. The information he gives can really only be learned through experience, as the deep web didn't exist yet, and hell, the internet itself was in its infancy and wasn't exactly commercially available to everyone, at least not someone who goes around digging up graves, and I don't think a public library is the greatest place for finding information about grave robbing. To this day, from what I can gather, grave robbing for morons remains an unresolved mystery. Nobody knows if it was a hoax, and if it was a hoax, why the hell would somebody do that in an unmarked, uncredited VHS tape? Publicity? No. All I can really say is that the video is probably real, and allowed to be up on YouTube for the past eight years. Around 2010, citizens of Indianapolis, Indiana began receiving strange text messages from an unknown source. These would often have strange religious preachings about how God has entered the body of the man sending said texts. These strange, most likely schizophrenic ramblings would continue on for several years without anyone finding the source. That was until people found this van driving around the Indianapolis streets, which confirmed that these messages did not originate from some kind of bot, but rather a real person. A person that people would later find out was named Bob Hickman. Bob has a pretty significant presence on social media, including Facebook, Twitter, his own website, and of course YouTube, although YouTube definitely seems to be his most active method of getting his words out. The words themselves, as in the way he actually speaks, are just as nonsensical as the text messages themselves, but basically the whole gist of what he's saying is that he's the only person in the world who has the spirit of God inside his body, and that when he dies, he passes on the spirit to someone else. You'd think this might be a good thing, in that Bob is endowed with divine intellect and power, but unlike someone like Terry Davis, he actually sees this as a bad thing. He talks about how God sends hot fire, electric currents, and gum disease through his body, and that he often gets visions of Jesus Christ laughing at his torment. He even sometimes shows off his physical wounds in his videos and on his Facebook. These physical abnormalities are most likely caused by other means, possibly poor hygiene or diet, but to a schizophrenic person like him, the hallucinations of God torturing him are most likely intense and incredibly realistic. Some people think he's a performance artist, but no, he's most likely just mentally ill. Let Me Hear Your War Cry is a video uploaded by YouTube user Spacehopper Copter in 2010. It's an edit of the Warface scene from Full Metal Jacket, with the faces replaced with the face of this strange mannequin. The audio is also pretty weird. That's pretty much all there is to this video. Not much mystery since the source for literally every aspect of it is in the description. I believe Pyramid Ransom video refers to a now deleted video uploaded to YouTube on November 17th, 2011, titled You Have 30 Days to Pay Me $5 Million, with the description stating, I just want to sell my silence. You have 30 days to pay me $5 million, otherwise I will upload the full version of this video. The video itself consisted of a scene of a man modifying an RC car to attach to a GoPro camera. He then set out, taking the RC car all the way to Egypt, more specifically the Great Pyramid of Giza. He then fits the car through a small, conveniently RC car-sized shaft, 
and drives it through, setting out to find the pyramid secrets. And then the video cuts off, and he states that if he doesn't receive the $5 million in 30 days, he'll reveal a full video, most likely trying to blackmail world governments with their secrets. He then linked to his website, nowiknow.com, which featured a countdown and... That was when it was the whole website. Soon enough, a month passed, and the man didn't receive his $5 million, and true to his word, he uploaded the full version of the video, which he had to pay five bucks for. I guess he had to make money somehow. It featured the car driving through the actual shaft, and coming across something you can barely make out because of the abysmal video quality. And that's it. No further information, and no one really knows how or why the video was created. The most common theory is that it was a viral advertising campaign for some movie or video game or something. There was a movie that came out three years after called The Pyramid, which features a team of archaeologists exploring a lost pyramid. So I guess maybe. Another common theory is that it was merely an art project, which, again, is what a lot of these end up being. Or maybe, if you want to give it the benefit of the doubt, it was real. Assuming that the Egyptian or American government didn't go after him for this, didn't kill him, or even prevent him from entering his little car into the pyramid, I guess it fucking could be real. Either way, all of these theories are simply baseless accusations, and we don't really know anything for sure. No one has ever come forward as the creator, and the video has since been taken down along with the website. And that's pretty much it, still an unsolved mystery. Although, I really don't think he actually got an RC car into the pyramid, call it a hunch. Poochie and Pansy is an animated web series started all the way back in 2009 by a fictional company called Dolst Family Entertainment. On the surface level, Poochie and Pansy is a children's show made in MS Paint about two puppies named, uh, Poochie and Pansy that go on an adventure to save a kitten from a witch. It seems innocuous at first, but quickly gets a bit creepy. A couple streamers here and there, some real-life imagery, and sooner or later down the Poochie and Pansy pipeline, we find ourselves in another ARG. More specifically, a smaller part of a larger ARG known as the Hunt for the Ganga Diddle. Back when this was started, Poochie and Pansy videos were posted to 4chan in order to recruit players. The sixth episode is called Message from the Ganga Diddle, which leads to the YouTube channel of the same name. Basically, users would receive hints from the Game Master, a character named Nathan Israel, to find real-world locations where a mysterious creature known as the Ganga Diddle would be hiding. What this all seems to be leading up to is a primitive ARG from the early days of YouTube, although it seems like it's coming back in recent years with a couple uploads to the channel over the past three years. Unedited footage of a bear is a short film created by Alan Resnick of Alan Editorial fame, first uploaded to the Adult Sim YouTube channel in 2014. It starts out as, well, unedited footage of a bear. Then a fake YouTube ad shows up for a fictional drug called Claradrill, which is apparently an antidepressant that allows you to be in two places at once. The ad seems to be aimed at parents, since taking care of two children at once can be a lot. Past that, I kinda don't want to spoil it. I would really recommend checking the video out. It's one of the, in my opinion, best short films you can watch on YouTube, touching on topics such as how antidepressants can often make users feel worse, and that it's all for the giant drug industry in the United States. There's also a minor ARG to go along with this, in the form of a website that's supposed to be for the drug Claradrill, but it seems to have been since taken down. Homunculus videos are fucking weird. If you're not familiar, a homunculus, at least in this context, is a strange creature that one makes by fertilizing the egg of some animal with human sperm. And basically what will come out of the egg is some strange alien creature, as if reality just glitched or something. Needless to say, these aren't real. Human sperm cannot fertilize an egg that isn't a human's. A human fucking a chicken isn't going to make a human-chicken hybrid like what happened for a liger or a mule. However, there are a lot of videos on YouTube of people making their very own homunculus. Like, for example, this Russian user named named Kokstelat, who has a 21-part series about various homunculi he makes, with the first video dating back to 2015. These videos are, again, obviously fake, but the very idea is kind of enough to freak me out. Like this freak of nature living mass of flesh coming out of an unholy combination. It's kind of freaky. Red Key Mon was a YouTuber who did videos about Grand Theft Auto V. He joined in 2013, but his latest video was uploaded in 2015, and since then he hasn't uploaded a single video. He was pretty popular having over a million subscribers, but for some reason, one day he vanished, in a similar fashion to Yuromir. He would then leave his subscribers in the dark for two whole years, with everyone wondering where he could have gone. He then made an update in 2017 via his comment section, stating that basically, he hates saying goodbye, and that's why he never did. He never intended to quit, but it started as a break, and then the months started piling up, and eventually he just decided to quit altogether. He then finishes off by saying he doesn't know if he'll ever come back, although you never know. Maybe for GTA 6, huh? Daisy Brown is a vlogging channel about a girl named 
Daisy. She joined YouTube in 2017, and her first video, called How I Feed Alan, showcases the main draw of the channel, her pet monster named Alan. No relation. The strange creature was apparently an experiment created by Daisy's father. He's weird, grotesque, and sickly, and seems to only eat sugar. As the series progresses, Alan grows up and becomes proceedingly more angry and even abusive towards Daisy. Pulling her hair out and screaming at her, Daisy becomes more and more mentally ill thanks to Alan's abuse, eventually culminating in her running away from home after a confrontation with him that ends with him dead on the floor. The series is widely regarded as one of the most popular ARGs on YouTube. Well, this is a bit predictable, huh? I guess every horror-related series on YouTube has to talk about this at some point. It isn't even really YouTube-related, but eh, whatever, we can talk about it. The Max Headroom signal hijacking was an event that happened on the night of November 22nd, 1987, when Chicago television broadcasts were interrupted twice, first during a WGN newscast, and the second two hours later during a new episode of Doctor Who on WTTW. The actual interruption itself featured a man in a mask that resembles Max Headroom, an AI computer-generated television producer that was used on certain news channels, even though he wasn't even computer-generated, it was just some guy wearing prosthetic makeup. Anyways, the hijacker would proceed to say some strange things that were hard to make out, like how WGN sportscaster Chuck Swirsky was a frickin' liberal, and called WGN a bunch of nerds. Honestly, I don't even really think he had a script. He just hijacked the airwaves and said whatever random shit he could think of, which to me is so fucking based. Then a female looking figure shows up and the hijacker exposes her ass to her before saying, they're coming to get me. She then smacks his ass with a fly swatter, and then viewers were returned to their Doctor Who. This is arguably the most infamous case of television hijackings ever recorded, and the perpetrator has never been identified, nor has he stepped forward. Just some random guy who got a hold of a TV broadcast, rambled incoherently, refused to elaborate, and left. Raw as hell. Krina Grisbo TV, or in English, Mushroomland TV, is a Polish web series started in 2013, created by Wiktor Stribuk. It's become pretty popular due to just how strange and bizarre the videos are. While they don't have a defined plot or continuity, each episode has a common theme of mushroom-related imagery and a visual aesthetic that harkens back to VHS recordings of the 1980s and 90s. The main characters are a teenage girl named Agatka and an animated squirrel named Malgosia, who are the hosts of a fictional educational show called... I'm not even going to try that one. As you can probably tell by my most likely horrible butcherings of the proper nouns I just mentioned, I'm not Polish, so it's interesting to learn about some creepypastas and ARGs from different cultures for a change. Flame Pillow Imagine Dom is a YouTube channel that's, at least in the current time, your average animation YouTuber. Their most recent uploads seem to be quite joyful, talking about the importance of life and how they managed to defeat depression. However, these videos are put into a different perspective when you take a look at their older, deleted videos. The channel joined in late 2016, and from there they began posting some quite unsettling videos. These included but were not limited to reproduction, a video about how those are mentally unstable or don't have a good health or financial situations should not reproduce. Happy Torture, a video about how humans naturally love to cause and inflict pain on each other. A child's family drawing, a video critiquing child abuse. Save Jesus, a video critiquing religion. And Natural Selection, a video that discusses how some people are just born naturally talented and intelligent, while others will fail to find their way. This is the point where Imagine Dumb shed some light on their personal life. They say that they're a person with a damaged brain due to their extreme mental illnesses that would give them morbid nightmares and hallucinations. They even say that at one point they considered ending it all for the betterment of society. Obviously, people's minds immediately erase the idea that this is an elaborate ARG or art project or something. But no, this was actually Imagine Dumb speaking out of their heart and that they had these terrible thoughts and mental illnesses. Then, at one point, they uploaded a video titled Cancer, where they explained that there's a chance that they might have throat cancer, citing a big lump on their throat. A few weeks later, they post an update video saying that they saw a doctor and that it was a false alarm. A few weeks later, they post an update video where they say that they saw a doctor and that it was a false alarm, and that because of this, they feel they have a second lease on life. After this video, they stopped uploading for a few years, and when they came back, they were a new, far more optimistic person. Their first video back was literally titled Punching Depression in the Face, and they explained, now with voiceover and stylized animation, that they've been spending the past few years fighting depression and suicidal thoughts. However, in their absence from the channel, 
They sought to get the help they need. They began seeing a psychiatrist and pushed themselves to have a more positive outlook on life, stating that they began to let go of all those depressing thoughts they once showed on the very same channel. Nowadays, they post fantasy art on their Twitter page, and every once in a while they post more animations to YouTube. This is honestly one of my favorite entries on the entire iceberg. It's a surprisingly wholesome ending to a pretty depressing story, and it just makes me feel great to remember that even in the worst ruts, people can still make it out if they practice enough self-help, and... I don't know, man, it just makes me feel good. And that's the end of part two of tier four of the YouTube iceberg. I've been making jokes that this tier is beginning to sound a lot like bullshit creepypasta story time, but I have genuinely been enjoying this tier, even if the various ARGs and creepypasta are kind of starting to blend together. It's really fun to look back on the stuff that used to creep me out as a kid, and also learn more about the weird side of YouTube. The further we go down, a larger percent of these videos and channels I haven't actually heard of, so it's getting a bit more difficult to talk about, while also being a lot more fun to research. I hope you're enjoying this tier as much as I am, and I will see you all next time in the last third of Tier 4. Peace out.